All right, so uh, this isn't going to be a Patreon request. It's more of a comic review of something I wanted to read, but also I should have known better. <laughs> and that is Star Wars Dark Droids. Now, the reason I picked this up was because, well, the premise did sound pretty cool. And secondly, um, yeah, the... Uh, I collect the Star... The only Marvel com the Marvel Star Wars I'm reading, like, consistently in trade is the Darth Vader books. Like, that's really it. And, of course, with another event, I had to finish... Uh, I had to continue with it. So, this is written by Charles Scholl, who's been... I think he's about to end his Star Wars run at issue 50. And artwork by Luke Gross. Um, yeah. This... Is... <sighs> Not as bad as Crim Crimson Rain. That's something. Anyway, so what is this comic about? This comic deals with the aftermath of the Hidden Empire, and not really connected to it, but it does have like a little seed to it, in that we have a entity called the Scourge, um, which is found, and it is basically like, it's kind of like a hive mind. It's basically like Brainiac, um, or... Like your typical, like, or Skynet. That's the better term, is Skynet. Where basically it connects itself parasitically to droids and is expanding its consciousness, but it also wants more. It, like, the tagline for this series is, first it comes for the metal, then it comes for everything else. And it's basically treated like a horror. Like, this is basically treated as Star Wars horror. And Star Wars horror has been very hit and I'm not talking just Marvel. I'm talking, like, in general, like, Star Wars horror has essentially been very hit and miss. Like, uh, Death Troopers, aces. In fact, that entire, like, quote-unquote trilogy with Red Harvest and Small Lockdown, great. But there are other books where I can point to where it's like, man, Star Wars in horror does not work. Here, I think it's a, it's a, there's, I think there's a, some good stuff in here visually. Storytelling-wise, that's a different story. Now, I don't hate Charles Soule. I don't think he's a bad writer. I just think he's, like, it's like his Star Wars stuff has been middling from what I've read. And it's mostly been the events, so I haven't been able to read his Star Wars run in the main books. Um, like I said, all I'm reading is Greg, Greg Pox Vader. Uh, because I've been collecting, that's the only comics I've been consistently collecting are the Darth Vader books. Anyway... So the Scourge basically wants to control the Force and control all life in the galaxy. However, there's this being who apparently showed up in um, Star Wars, uh, in the star main Star Wars comics called Ajax Sig Sigma, and his church, his he's basically a dro uh, combat droid who's now a priest trying to protect his, uh, protect the galaxy from the Scourge because he's more worried about if the Scourge kills every it like starts killing humans they're gonna turn on us and it's almost like a Charles Xavier kind of thing where it's like I want you know to the humanity to accept us as sentient droids because they're not like they're they're basically droids who are sentient and Ajax Sigma so seems like a cool character again he this is my first time encountering him so, and again, this is a character we've seen before. So, but if you're just now reading Dark Droids, you're going to be confused. It's like, who the fuck is Ajax Sigma? It also sounds like a Transformer character, right? Um, but yeah. So the skirt there. It's kind of infuriating. This in, in this event. This event is very show. Not enough tell. Whereas with, at least with this one, Crimson, it, Crimson Rain, I can't get over how bad Crimson Rain was. Because it was just like, show off the origin story of each character, not and, folk, and the tie-ins are more of the main story. Here, the tie-ins are more of the main story. I imagine I'm going to get more story out of the Vader tie-in than anything else. But here, here, I feel like at least there's something. But, um, I, uh, like... The Scourge is a pretty interesting character because, like, he starts, like, devouring so much consciousness, uh, droid consciousness, um, that he has to, like, spread himself out into different personas, like the Elder, the Warrior, the Child, and has this moment where the Child basically is like, I'm the Child, I am all your fears, and he goes, I don't want to do this, like, I'm, this is not what I wanted, like, I did, I, I thought I did, 
but it doesn't stop the hunger. Like it, it like the hunger never ends. I it, like I don't know what I'm doing. And that's kind of cool. Like your main villain has this mo this quick moment of revelation, and it's gone. It's gone. He's like now resolute um, in his conviction. Also, don't get used to Luke as our main hero. That he's in the tie-in books. This is a fucking lie. Um, R2 is built as the hero, and he just shows up last second. If you want to hear more about like um, R2 and his adventures with Triple Zero and BT1 and IG88 and Forlom, you're gonna have to go read Dark Droids D Squad, which I might have to because that because uh, the idea because I let it, like all those characters together seems a lot of fun, and also the idea of IG88 versus Triple Zero. Is pretty cool, but it's written by Mark Guggenheim, who I think is a pretty pissed poor writer. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, but yeah, it also infects uh, C3PO, which again, if you want to know more, but like how that goes, go read the Star Wars not uh, tie-ins, which I won't. Um, yeah, um, yeah. The comic does feel, like, disjointed from everything else. Like, again, there's this quick moment where he's, like, um, when he wants to know more about the Force, the Scourge tries to infect Vader because he's connected to the Force and he's a cyborg, and he immediately dumps that plan after, like, one failed attempt. Although, again, I'm pretty sure that'll change at, in the uh, tie-in novel. So, we will see about, uh, you know, we will see about that. But the comic itself just feels like all the like again it feels like all the real stuff you came for is in the tie-ins and this is the event is more of the supplement that's what really bothers me about these charles soul star wars events is that they feel more like the the main the real crux of the story is in the tie-ins and the main event is just supplementing like just kind of adding everything is just helping things along and and again I know Marvel and DC have been, you know, guilty of this in the past with events. But, like, it's very egregious in ch the Charles Soule Star Wars events. It was it was bad in War of the, it, War of the uh, Bounty Hunters. It was egregious in, if you were reading the main Crimson Reign storyline. Because nothing fucking happens until the last two issues. Here, at least, the main, the main focus is the Scourge itself. And again... I will give credit that, you know, um, there is some cool body horror done with droids when it's trying to, like, figure out, um, like, if I, you know, bio, only biomechanical, you know, only the meat, the meat, as he calls it, can use the force. So he starts, like, sawing dead people off, like, apart and putting body parts on the droids. Let me see if I can find, like, a good image of that. Because um, it is kind of like nightmare fuel. Uh, on a whole, where he's just kind of, like, putting piecemeal body parts together, trying to figure something out. Like, here, and I think it's a reference to Ganesh, um, the god Ganesh here. Like, um, there we go. Where he's got human body parts on his body. Um, let's see. Um, what's another one where, ah, where he's got, like, body parts and like skulls it's very it actually reminded me a lot of um if anyone has seen this movie uh frankenstein's army it was a cool like world war ii found footage movie it's the closest we will ever get to a actual good resident evil movie go check that out if you haven't already it's a fun movie again it's the closest we'll ever get to a like legit um uh star wars movie to a legit almost said star wars resident evil movie but yeah, the comic comes to an anticlimactic close, and I, and I do stress anticlimactic, where, like, in a brief mo like, it almost feels like Soul wanted to, to get one more issue instead of, like, wanted this to be five issues instead of six. Because the last few pages, like, he ascends to full, like, I control everything now, and then Ajax Sigma just comes up behind him and stabs him, and that's the end. That's it. A yeah, Ajax Sigma... Um, just, uh, like, this robot who, again, if you weren't reading the Star Wars comics, is like, who the fuck is this guy? Um, yeah. And Sigma does have some cool things to him, I'll give him that, is that, like, he's a priest droid who 
wants to help other sentient droids like there's these revelations where it's like the first one is i then it's we and then when he encounters the scourge he's like them and then the third the fourth revelation is all and they kind of build it that he might be a villain in the future if soul does any more comics which i'm kind of like uh no we don't need that he seems like an interesting you don't need to turn him into a villain but yeah it's not as bad as the other soul centric uh, of Star Wars events, but there is like it's just kind of infuriating that like there's some potential here and some neat body droid body horror in here, but it just kind of falls short, especially at the end. It had some really cool ideas and maybe it could have worked them out with maybe one more issue, but whatever. Anyway, so that's my review of Star Wars Dark Droids. I will be doing a review of Darth Vader. Uh, Dark Droids, the tie-in, because that's tied in the comics, and I've been covering the Darth Vader novel uh, trades for ever. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, so if you've read Star Wars Dark Droids, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of it. Did you guys like it, hate it? Comment below, let me know. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.